What's going on? This is TJ Murphy, and welcome to another episode of Adventurous Entrepreneurs. My guest today is Kyle McLeod. Kyle is a dynamic force in the tech startup arena. More than just a software engineer, Kyle embodies the spirit of a true innovator and entrepreneur. With a career marked by significant shifts to chase the thrilling world of technology, Kyle has mastered the art of building not just products, but also communities. He's at the heart of Ben's startup scene and is a true community builder here that I admire and look up to. As a strategic partner and thought leader, Kyle specializes in crafting user-centric solutions, bringing valuable problem-solving products to life. From the spark of an idea to a fully realized platform, Kyle's journey through bootstrapping and venture funding has equipped him with unique insights to guide startups towards achieving product market fit. But Kyle isn't all work and no play. When not revolutionizing the tech world, you can find him embracing the great outdoors, golfing, snowboarding, mountain biking, or honing his woodworking skills. And it's this blend of relentless pursuit of personal and professional growth that truly makes Kyle an adventurous entrepreneur. So join in today. Just a few of the golden takeaways Kyle and I are talking about in this episode are innovations in the high desert, Central Oregon's rise as a startup hotspot turning ideas into impact, and the keys to successful product development. So without further ado, this is me and Kyle McLeod. Welcome to the Adventurous Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Murphy. Since quitting my corporate nine to five and starting a business while backpacking through Asia back in early 2017, I've had the privilege of learning from some incredibly adventurous entrepreneurs. Through these conversations and my own journey, I've learned that much like in life, entrepreneurship is an adventure. On this podcast, I explore the journeys of top performing leaders in their fields. These wide ranging conversations include tactical business advice, how I built this insights, lessons in leadership, life hacks, travel stories, favorite hobbies, and insights into living a purposeful and joy-filled life. Adventures await us, so let's dive in. Hey, Kyle, welcome to Adventurous Entrepreneurs, man. Hey, thanks for uh, having me. Great to be here. Yeah, dude. Appreciate you making the time. I know this will be a fun conversation. I'm sure you got a lot of value to share. So I'd love to start with a bit of background on the journey because it's been a fascinating one. You know, from making some major career changes to getting deeply involved in community development, I'd love it if you could just share a bit of background on your story. And and was there a pivotal moment that led you to become the adventurous entrepreneur you are today? You know, not not really a, a single pivotal moment. It was um, kind of a long, slow burn, uh, changing direction from my my previous life. You know, being super involved in non technical business uh, from sales and marketing and operations and um, working for my dad for a long time in a very non-technical business. Um, Just starting to realize I really love the technical world. Um, And I think one of the big reasons is because I have always liked building things, whether it's, you know, getting away from the computer screen and going and building stuff with my hands. You know, I do a lot of woodworking to knowing that I wanted to build a product and and build something myself someday. Um, took a couple stabs at it when I was younger, uh, failed miserably, but, you know, got hooked on the process and um, tech always seemed like the way to go. That was the way the world was moving. And if I didn't know it, I was going to get left behind. So, um, you know, kind of over time taught myself a bunch and then made the decision one day to actually like cut the cord and I went back to school, did like a tech boot camp, um, and then got my first professional job coding. And the whole reason, again, like I said, I got into tech was to become a builder, to be able to actually build stuff, not just to, not just to code, but to actually bring something new into the world. So, you know, over just a lot of time it, I transitioned, um, my area of expertise. But I think from the beginning, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to build something new. I wanted to bring new things into the world. Um, That's kind of always been with me. Yeah, man. What was that first tech job or the first coding job that you took? So I worked for a company called Service Central. Uh, The CTO um, was based out of Ben, the CTO and his cousin, who was this kind of chief architect, main, you know, head of development. Um, they were both here in Ben. 
and uh, met him through BenJS, through one of the networks that I, I operate now. This was back uh, in the early days, like early 2018, um, uh, early days of me uh, running that networking group. Um, so yeah, I was just making a lot of connections and they were looking for um, an engineer to br- b- kind of build out a brand new product line for them and uh, just started talking to him and yeah, talked my way into it. Um, it was my first real, you know, professional software development job, even though I'd, I'd done a lot of projects beforehand, a lot of personal projects and some kind of little bits of building websites and stuff for, for people I knew, but yeah, first real job doing like a production application. And, uh, it was, it was a blast taught me a lot, just, um, not really an industry or anything I was super passionate about. Um, but yeah, great company, uh, definitely enjoyed it and it taught me a lot. Yeah. As that like first intro into that space, was there anything that either you didn't expect that kind of shocked you about, about the industry, or was there anything that, you know, maybe you, you know, you had some expectations for that, that fell short at all? Like what, what was there, what was there in that that position? Not particularly, um, nothing shocking or, um, you know, jolting, but again, kind of just the, the slow burn of, um, learning new things every day, realizing all the things that I didn't know, um, getting more involved in the, in the tech industry and the community here and talking to people who've been coding for 25 years, you know, coding since they were a kid and I was never into it, you know, I got into it later in life. So, um, you know, even to this day, as long as I've been in the tech industry, I'm still, you know, feel like such a noob compared to some of these guys who are like, crazy awesome engineers um one thing that was really cool about that job that i got was it it gave me the opportunity to not just write the software but also be heavily involved on the product development side because i was the only one doing i was the only one doing that new product line Mm -hmm. um and so I got to be really involved in designing the product, figuring out what users were going to want, um, figuring out what the UX and UI was going to be like, and just kind of from the beginning, learning how to build something from scratch. Cause it was a, it was a from scratch product that kind of bolted onto the side of an existing platform. Um, so I got, you know, the full top to bottom, uh, not just software development life cycle, but uh, the actual product development life cycle. And so I kind of got to touch every piece of it. Um, and that was pretty valuable. So yeah, yeah well, nothing, what, nothing what crazy really but... focusing on today. And, and I know what you're, you're really passionate about. So like, let's bring things forward. You had a lot of, a lot of pivots in between then and now, <laughs> but, but with product development being your, your biggest focus, tell us a little bit about what you're focused on today. Yeah, so I um, have found myself just with the opportunity to help a lot of different companies um, start their own thing uh, and build a product, you know, help them turn vision into reality. And, um, you know, it's a lot of catchy buzzwords and things, but it's it's kind of true. It's um, at this stage of the game, you're I, I'm getting the opportunity to work with a lot of people who started with an idea not that long ago. And for whatever reason, you know, maybe they got some cash um, and they want to bring this vision to life, um, which is something I'm super passionate about, like I said. Uh, But now I'm getting the opportunity to help manage that whole process and working with a good team of engineers um, through my work with Uptech Studio, uh, working with a great team of engineers and designers to actually like help bring that part to life. for kind of those people that, that are, you know, at least somewhat funded and ready to get going. And a big part of that, which is awesome is being able to shape strategy, um, being relied on for knowledge and process that helps people not make bad decisions. Cause there is, there is a way to go about building a product where you're not just throwing money down the drain. Mm -hmm. Um, Too many people just kind of dive head first in with, I have this idea, it's a need for me, and I'm either going to build it myself somehow, whether you're a developer or you hire some, you know, outsource development team, but I have this very specific idea and I'm just going to build it. And obviously people are going to want it. It's never the case that people just want it that way. (laughs) 
And if you go with a outside development team, you have to be very, very good at defining requirements. Um, because if you just tell someone else, if you were to come up with an idea and you were going to tell someone else, anyone, just you're going to tell your mom, here's what my vision is. Here's what I want to build. And she was supposed to draw it out on a napkin or something. Guaranteed, you're probably not going to get that right the first time. She's not going to understand what you're talking about. You're not going to be explaining it properly. So even if you're so deep into it, there's always help that can be had for defining requirements correctly, making sure those requirements line up with market need and uh, doing that kind of early work and that early research to ensure that you're the money that you spend, the effort that you spend, because it is all encompassing is going to be well worth it. Um, and so I get to do that kind of every day. Uh, whether it's through my work with Uptech Studio, I have, um, you know, some clients I work with on the side, more on just the strategy perspective and of looking at roadmaps and figuring out requirements and, um, you know, whether it's going to get investment and figure out what you're going to do with that money or building out MVPs, things like that. Uh, it's really rewarding. And it's also a good chance for me to like see a whole bunch of different industries, a whole bunch of different ideas, um, understanding what makes a good founder and what makes a good product plan and what makes a good go-to-market strategy because I get to see all of it. Um, so it's just a lot of really valuable information and also something that for me it keeps me occupied every day. Um, I really don't like to get bored and doing this, I'm doing something different every single day. So I never really have that problem. Yeah, there's always a new challenge to solve. And I like that you brought up product market fit, because I mean, there's so many startups out there. Like you said, the founder has this great idea. They think it's, you know, the bee's knees, best thing, God's gift to earth, but they don't go through the process to really identify what that product's going to look like when it hits the market. So what are some of those like challenges that, that you experience when you're working with these clients? Like what are the most commonly thing, commonly, most common things when it comes to people finding that product market fit and, and how do you approach that challenge? Like how do you work with them to overcome what they think is a great idea and then showing them, no, here's actually the viable product from that idea. I think the number one thing that a, a good founder can have is this strange combination of flexibility and um, immutability. You have to be incredibly flexible and willing to pivot away from your baby, away from your idea of what's going to be perfect and what the needs are based on what you hear from users. And even before you have users, the, the market, you know, the market interviews that you're doing and understanding what your competitors are doing that's working and your competitors are doing that's not working and what the market can handle. You know, there's so much research that goes into it to really shape what a vision should be based on what your initial idea is. So you have to be super flexible when the time comes, but at the same time, you have to be, you know, like a massive freaking boulder that is unmovable by people because everyone's going to throw an idea at you. Everyone's going to throw a single feature or a single one-off feature at you. Oh man, I'd love it if you could do this, or I would definitely use the app if it could do this, or, oh, have you ever thought that, um, you know, adding X, Y, and Z feature would like capture this whole other side of the market. But you have to know like, hey, that we're not targeting that at first. Yes, maybe on the roadmap down the road, but we can't stretch ourselves as a startup too thin. I can't be thinking oh, about, shiny different yeah, I can't be thinking about three different verticals that I'm trying to hit all at once when building an MVP. You're never going to get anything done. So you have to also be really willing to stick to your guns and also not jump it every time someone says jump. You wait until you get enough feedback around one or two specific features to know like, hey, this is a good direction and it's economically worth it for us, you know, I guess economically, but also just from a, a time and effort and brain powers perspective to shift focus or to pivot what we're doing. So it, it's a really fine line. And honestly, a lot of it just comes from experience um, and intuition and 
passion, you know, just for the space and, and being, if you're a founder in a space, making yourself an expert in that space. So you have that ability to spot when something is a passing fad within the space that you're working with or something that, you know, this is actually going to really affect a lot of users. And I'm hearing it a lot. I'm seeing it a lot. I'm connecting those patterns. Okay, let's actually make the effort to pivot. Yeah, I love it. I mean, as a partner for these founders, I mean, you really have a passion for solving real world problems. Is there like a favorite project that you've worked on? Or can you share an example of a project where you felt particularly proud of the impact that that you made and then ultimately that that product made in the market? Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking what I can share. Um, <laughs> yeah. Without, without breaking any NDAs. Yeah. You know, a couple of years ago, I, I had a ton of fun working with my buddy Nate um, on figuring out uh, kind of a roadmap. This was just like a high level strategy couple sessions it was only for a couple months um but he was getting ready for bbc a few years ago and he was pitching um and he had this youtube channel um that had 500,000 subscribers and it was a uh, um in the running space and fitness space and he was an excellent coach uh had a huge following on social media a huge following on youtube and they had an app that they were trying to take to the next level. And so I had just an absolute blast working with him to try to figure out like, you know, what does this look like as an actual product? You get, you have this incredible brand loyalty. Like how does this product actually work and trying to strategize and figure out roadmap and what it's going to look like, how much resources it's going to take, you know, how to go about breaking up those resources and what the plan is and then getting them ready for BBC and helping them with pitch practice and things like that. And um, then watching him kind of, that kind of culminated with him pitching at BBC. Um, and then for a bunch of reasons I won't get into, um, there was some stuff down the road that uh, kind of unfortunately halted the progress of, of that product. But uh, that was an absolute ton of fun just working on that kind of high level strategy with someone who's who is an expert in the brand and then in the domain of what he was doing, an absolute expert uh, and had huge loyalty, but also didn't quite know, you know, what that looked like to to turn it into a tech product and being able to work with him. That was like kind of an early uh, chance for me to just kind of work on that top level strategy. And that was a lot of fun. Um, and then the one recently I, I can talk about um, because it's launched in the market is a, a platform called Fan Inc. Um, and that is through uh, my work with Uptech Studio. Um, and Fan Inc. is, I think, going to be an absolute game changer in college sports. Um, so follows the kind of new NIL rules that anyone who follows college sports, especially football, is hearing about a lot about at this point. Um, with athletes being able to accept contributions uh, for their name, image, or likeness and actually get paid. Um, and this is an opportunity to connect fans and athletes and provide financial literacy and education to some of these college athletes who've never experienced that before and teach them about how, you know, how to get paid properly, how to manage taxes, how to manage a bank account. Um, so the work that we're doing with that team is, uh, it's been super rewarding and it's really exciting that I can kind of talk about it now because it's live. It was a long project um, just to get it to that live point, but we wanted to do it right. And really it's just the beginning at this point. I think this is uh, could absolutely dominate the college sports market in terms of tech that is supportive of that market uh, for years to come. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And having dug into it myself and, and seen your work in action, you guys did an amazing job with it. And just that industry as a whole right now, this is like what year one and a half and it's already a billion dollar industry. So oh, it's, the it's the awesome. limit with this thing, man, it's, it's going to be crazy. And the fact that it's going to empower athletes to really not only make some money while, while they're in college, but learn the literacy to manage their finances and, and not just blow it all so that they can walk away. Cause not everybody's going to make the NFL. That's just the reality. Not everybody's going to make it to the big leagues. And to have that ability to, to make money now and set up a system, create that foundational stuff to build wealth and hold on to it. 
that's a game changer. So absolutely. Gonna... And that's, that's one reason I really love this product and why it's been, you know, you, you work with some founders who are really just on that top level vision train, you know, they have the idea and maybe they know have some domain knowledge, but um, you know, you really have to like walk with them and, and, dive really, really deep into do certain aspects and how to test a market and how to understand what everything's going to look like and then teach them about the software development life cycle and how that works and resource allocation and all that. And the people um, who uh, came up with the Fan Inc. app idea and who manage that project and who own that are um, some of the best clients ever. Um, understand the process, understand uh the dichotomy of moving fast and breaking things to get to market but also taking your time and doing it right because it's so important and then really when it comes down to the um financial education piece it's really doing it right it's it's one of those things where they stood really firm um like i talked about a few minutes ago in terms of uh, sticking to your guns that they're standing really firm on you know, maybe at first people aren't going to want this. Athletes might not want these extra steps of like, oh, I got to withhold money for taxes. I don't want to have to. I'm 18 years old. I'm making some cash on the side for being an athlete. I don't want to withhold tax. I don't, who wants to think about that? But it's where it's one of those instances where these founders having this vision and sticking with their guns that this is the game changer that there's this little bit extra that separates them from anyone else who's just trying to make a buck on top of these athletes. Well, it's, you know, I, I haven't dug into all the competitors and everything else that's coming on the market new every day, but it, it does feel like a lot of people and there will be a lot of people who are just going to see this industry blow up and they're going to say, how much can I skim off the top? Editorial. And they're not in it for providing real lasting value and that's what this app does, which is one reason I'm so passionate about it, is, is it really does the right thing and sets these athletes up for success. And especially the ones who aren't going to make it to the pros, you know, they need to understand what it's like to get a paycheck on a certain cadence and not just, Hey, every time someone hands me a hundred dollar bill digitally, I just get this hundred dollars and that's it. Like there's, there's things that you have to do. You get a paycheck, you get taxes withheld. You have to manage that money properly. You need to understand how to manage a bank account. Um, how to manage your finances. And so by bringing that kind of stuff in and we're continuing to build that out, it's going to be an absolute game changer um, within this blowing up industry. Yeah, I agree, man. I love that it's it's really protecting the athletes because as you said, there's going to be there's going to be people that are jumping in to, to take advantage of, of a vulnerable opportunity where there is a lot of money to be made. So yeah. Well, and the bottom line is for me, you know, I, I did mention that, like, I just have this passion for building things. I'm going to caveat that with, I have a passion for building things that matter, that provide value. I'm never going to be involved in building something that doesn't actually provide value to an end user. I want to know that you are affecting someone's life in a positive way. Could be just a small positive way that makes their day 20% more efficient. But hey, that's huge if you're a busy person. But you know, something that truly affects someone's life on a daily basis and provides that value, those are the products that matter. Yeah, 100%. And a bit of a segue here, but another passion of yours and one of the things that I admire most about you guys is your natural ability to foster community. Like literally just this week, I had two different people that I admire talk about you in that way. So I'm curious, how do you approach just networking and, and community building in a, in a genuine and effective way? It is, you know, it's one of those other things that I kind of fell into. Um, I didn't necessarily know I was passionate about it at the beginning. Um, I kind of fell into helping manage uh, the, the tech meetup here in town called BenJS um, back in like early 2018, um, the guy who originally started it was, I, I had come to a couple events. I told him, Hey, if you ever need any help, like I'd love to be more involved in the community. I got my first job out of that. Um, seeing good opportunity. I wanted to make sure other people had that opportunity as well. And then it kind of fell in my lap that he was leaving town and no one else really wanted to like 
step all the way up. We had some other people helping, but no one kind of wanted to take charge and make sure it really like kept going. And so I said, sure. And I kind of just fell into it and discovered my passion for building that community um, kind of just through the opportunity that I got from saying yes to that. Um, and then since then, yeah, we've, we've grown that community. Um, it's just kind of identifying the needs of the community and, and, you know, I kind of treat it the same way as building a product, which is find the value, um, and, and see how you can provide the value to the end user. And in this case, the end user is the community. Like we know there is a huge tech community here in Bend and central Oregon, um, in general, um, I'm passionate about the tech community. Um, and every time that I see a connection being made, every time I see someone else getting a job through the community or meeting someone that's going to help them on their journey somehow and, and reciprocating that, that is, that is kind of just realize like how good that feels, you know, almost in that selfish way of like helping people makes you, makes you feel good. Like watching those connections grow and watching these good things happen just makes me more and more passionate about continuing on and helping to grow the community and helping to make more connections and make this community bigger, stronger, better, and providing that value for the members in the community. Yeah, I love it, man. And on that note, you recently hosted an, uh, an inaugural event here in Central Oregon called the High Desert Innovation Fest. And I know that was a massive undertaking. So can you share what what inspired you to create this event? What was it and how things went? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was, again, just a kind of continuation of running BenJS for a while. Um, and, you know, not only am I super passionate about tech in general, um, but also tech entrepreneurship and building new products. So um, earlier this year, um, my coworker, co-host, um, Claude uh, with Uptech Studio, um, he and I were talking and realized that, you know, going to a bunch of pub talks and things like that, you know, there's, we know there's a lot of tech entrepreneurs here in town. A lot of people from the Bay Area, a lot of people from Seattle and Portland have been moving up here and just this huge tech community that is ripe for building new products. Um, and no one was really getting together. There wasn't any events that were really dedicated to that. You have companies like or organizations like Cultivate Bend, uh, which does amazing work across manufacturing, natural products, food and bev. Um, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, and then you have Bend Outdoor Works, which is an amazing organization that really focuses on outdoor products, which is a huge market here. Um, and those those organizations are awesome. Um, and then obviously there's a whole bunch of other ones coming out of Portland and um, you know other, other entrepreneur-focused organizations in and around Central Oregon, but nothing really focused on the tech side and bringing that community together. And so we were already, you know, heavily involved in it with BenJS. So we decided to start uh, a new meetup. And that's kind of where this whole idea began is we started this new meetup, um, invited every tech entrepreneur or anyone even remotely interested in maybe starting a tech product or being part of a startup, invited them to come. Um, opened it up as kind of an informal place to get feedback, to do pitches, to ask questions, try to network, um, you know, just again, build those connections and hope good things happen from people talking. And that rolled its way into us working with Edco and Cultivate and Bend Outdoor Works and talking about like, hey, we have all this entrepreneurship. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have all this entrepreneurship. How about we figure out a way to work together? Like, how do we make a a single event here in town that, you know, brings people from all over the region and shows the breadth and depth of resources that we have here for whatever type of business you want to build? So that's how we got into High Desert Innovation Week, kind of like a co-branding experience. And our first attempt at what I'm hoping in coming years is going to be um, at least once a year where we, all of us organizations come together and collaborate um, for kind of the betterment of the region and entrepreneurship in general. Um, and then we wanted to kick off the week with a completely kind of agnostic pitch competition 
Um, BBC closed out the week. Obviously, that's a huge pitch competition. Um, Bend Outdoor Works did a pitch competition for some of their accelerator um, companies. And Cultivate Bend um, did an event with Built Organ. And uh, Built Organ has its own accelerator, and they had a bunch of talks and everything. We wanted to focus on something a step earlier than all of those events. Hey, you're not ready for BBC. Yet. You're not ready for an accelerator yet. Maybe you just have an idea, and you want to test the market and see if you can make some contacts with investors or find other people to help you on your journey. And that's where the idea for the Innovation Fest came. Um, we kind of stole it from uh, the old Unconference or stole a lot of the pieces. Um, that was a really great event hosted by Bentech uh, back before the pandemic. And it was, you know, somewhat informal. You invite a bunch of people together, the crowd votes on the winner. Everyone just has a few minutes with themselves and a microphone to tell their story or describe their product and whatever it is. And it's like that first step into you know, we want to be a real business. We want to go get investment. We want to see if this is something we want to pursue. Like, how does the crowd react? How do these people in the know react? And making that agnostic to any industry. Um, and man, it was a it was a lot of work, but it ended up being a pretty big success. Like, way better than I could have expected for the first year. Something that we threw together in a couple months. Um, you know, got some sponsorship money in to throw, you know, have a little, uh, prize for the winners at the end, had drinks, had food. Um, thank you for, for tossing in on, uh, you know, yeah, helping with, uh, support. It was absolutely huge. Um, but yeah, it, it was kind of amazing. We got like 90 people there. Yeah. Which for people listening, you know, like Bend is, it, it's growing fast, but it's not a big, big city by any stretch. So yeah. first year event, Man, I just want to say, like, I'm I'm so excited that people like you are making this stuff happen because there really is a a budding startup culture here, and there's so many great people that have moved here from you know the Bay Area to to really capitalize on on the amazing lifestyle that that Ben provides, and there's so much opportunity. We have all of these great groups that you know traditionally have been pretty siloed, and people like you are working to to bring them together to cross pollinate and, and just create more momentum with all the amazing people that we have here. So I'm curious if there's any thoughts that you have in terms of what you envision for the future of of the startup ecosystem here in Central Oregon, and what role do you see yourself playing in that in the years ahead? Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of my role, um. I kind of just see myself as a coordinator. Um, I just want to see it happen. I, I don't know how, like where, like <laughs> half the time I don't, I, you know, I look, I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting any, you know, financial benefit or anything from it. I'm making great connections and hopefully being able to help other people with their journey to building a product. If they need help, absolutely come to me. But you know, that's not why I'm doing it. And sometimes I, I kind of wonder, and it's just this deep seated passion and seeing the, the happiness that it brings to these people and the opportunity that it, that it brings to, you know, people who are trying to figure out what's next for them and trying to figure out how to continue on that journey. And really just seeing this place that, you know, is my adopted home, but I absolutely love it here. I um, moved here for all the you know, reasons you just talked about, you know, people move here all the time. Um, and I just want to see it succeed. I, you can feel if you're, if you're even halfway involved, you can feel the energy, you can feel the, um, size potential of the market here to, to capture this community and to make this community explode is such an amazing place to build a business. Sure. And it's a little bit intangible for me, um, you know, what exactly it is that pushes me to be a part of it and help lead it and and spend the time. Um, so for me, you know, I just kind of want to be a guide and a, a connector and a, a collaborator um, with these other amazing organizations that are doing awesome work um, and just kind of generally do what I can where I'm needed to help push the community forward. And so looking at the next five, 10 years, I think we could be an absolute hub in the region um, for all types of innovation. Obviously, I, I'm super passionate about the tech side, but 
Um, you know, I don't necessarily want us, but definitely don't see us becoming like a Silicon Valley or something because we're so unique. Um, there's a reason people leave Silicon Valley and we don't have the resources yet to compete on that level, but I think it's very possible, but we're going to, we're going to keep our own culture. We're going to keep our own way of life and not have to shape our community to fit some preconceived notion of what a startup community looks like um, because of these other organizations that we get the opportunity to work with. I think it's going to be very unique um, and very culture driven across different industries. And so that's kind of where I see us is, is the new version of Silicon Valley where outdoor products and natural products and manufacturing and tech all collide into this maelstrom of just uh, entrepreneurship and innovation, um, new products being built, um, new companies being built, uh, people moving here and bringing their companies here and just being here for all of the cultural reasons and all of the outside benefits that a place like this provides and, and having that, kind of cultural ether be the background that is driving what we do and why we do it here specifically. But that's kind of where I see the next five years being is just continuing to grow towards those goals. So when people think of Ben, they think of an amazing place to go and start a business and be part of a community. Yeah, man. I love the vision. I'm excited for, for it to really take shape. And I know I speak for many when I say thank you for, for all that you're doing to help foster that community because, you know, it doesn't go unnoticed. And especially like just this event and everything else that you've done is is really kicking things off in a strong way. So appreciate you there, bud. And another pivot, you've mentioned to me before that if you follow your passions, you'll always enjoy life. And part of this podcast, our big theme is like designing your business around the lifestyle that that you really want to live and, mm -hmm. and being intentional about how you balance things. So curious, how do you balance following your passions with the pragmatic needs of, of running a business and, and providing for your family? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, right? It's it's um it's something that I've been exploring a lot in just my personal life, my personal conversations through my, my own very modest podcast that I started earlier this year, just exploring that exact question of e even whether it's possible, like as a hypothesis, like, is this possible to, to really build something successful, to be a success um, while also, you know, enjoying yourself and, you know, being happy and, and enjoying all the finer things in life, whether it's your family that you're passionate about or the outdoors or some combination thereof, um, or some individual activity or sport or whatever it might be. Um, and you know, the conclusion that I've come to being in a place like this is there are a lot of really, really successful people here and there is a path. It's just a matter of perspective. Um, and a matter of really defining success for yourself. So for me, yeah, maybe if I worked a hundred hours a week, I would, you know, have a bank account with like 20 zeros in it. Cool. But you know, I don't want to work a hundred hours a week. So for me, my kind of how I manage it is, um, you know, ensuring that no matter what I do, that I am taking time for the things that matter to me. And first and foremost, that's my family, my my two and a half year old, being able to spend time with him. Um, but also, you know, I like to golf, mountain bike, snowboard, hike, hang out on the river. Um, all the events. I would work like all kinds of stuff. And it's just a matter of, you know, implementing strategies that help me achieve that. Um, so yeah. Oh. Yeah, it might be a little bit extra work, but, you know, time boxing and making sure I set boundaries and um, having specific times where I'm grinding and specific times where I'm off. Um, and it's also about working with the right people, choosing the right people to be around you. Uh, that's a huge aspect that I think goes under noticed and underutilized. 
is making sure that the people you work with, the people that you surround yourself with are on that same wavelength uh, and respect that. And even better if they partake with you. Yeah, couldn't agree more, man. You got to be intentional about the relationships and the people you surround yourself with. You want to be focusing on the energy giving relationships, not the energy draining relationships. Uh, 100%. Especially an entrepreneur when, you know, every every hour is is critical because like you said, you could be working 100 hours and obviously the more you work, the more successful you're going to be to some degree, but at what cost? And at having those cost? parameters to really be intentional about when you're on, you're on, you're going to grind. But when you're, when you're off, you're going to rest, you're going to recharge, you're going to relax and have joyful experiences with the people that you care about most. So yeah. On that, man. So as we wrap up, I, I teed this up earlier, but I have a choose your own adventure question for you. So you can pick yeah. which one you'd like to answer or, or both if you so desire, but what's a, a favorite place that, that you've traveled to in your life or in the just past few years or just a recent adventure that you went on. I mean, we live in an adventurous place, so there's probably been some amazing adventures that, that you've gone on here in the, the beautiful area of Central Oregon. And in either case, what was it like? What made it so memorable? Favorite meal or drink you had there? Give us a story. You know, it's tough. I haven't do, done a whole lot of like crazy traveling. Um, probably my my favorite memory of like within the last few years mm -hmm. is uh, my honeymoon. Went to Italy for two weeks, um, had an amazing time, spent the first week down on the southern coast, just exploring and kind of digging in there to the history. I'm also a huge history nerd, so um, and getting to explore Italy and learn about the history. I had to keep it a little bit on the down low because my wife is not super into the history. So I had to like, oh, that's really cool. That's, you know, from hold it down, Kyle. hold it down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but then uh, something really cool that happened there is we were up in Tuscany for a week and ended up meeting this couple, me and the this other guy, they're, they're about our age. We, and we were on this bed and breakfast on the top of this hill. There's probably maybe a hundred people total at this B&B, &B, a bunch of rooms and stuff. And every day there was a breakfast and a dinner served and it was part of your stay and um so not many people really small just in the middle of of tuscany we get there this guy's wearing <laughs> we're both wearing blue shirts and pink shorts and a white fedora i, I you know going full italy mode more yeah. like full tourist mode but totally. we were both wearing the same thing and then we kind of say hi to each other come to find out they got married the day before us in bend what no way in Bend and they live here small world man and it was like so random we we were both from Seattle um my wife and his wife were both from Oregon and there were so many weird coincidences and we Lone just had a couple to meet of them. you guys <laughs> yeah just like meeting some doppelgangers um and yeah. then yeah, still really good friends with them uh to this day that's awesome um, that was pretty, that was pretty awesome. And then I, I will say the one other one for adventures around here that I would highly recommend last January did a backcountry one day backcountry ski trip, a little bit of like avalanche training stuff, but mainly it was just some backcountry skiing, um, <clears throat> skinning and going down this cool bowl off a uh, bald butte. So, uh, you start at bachelor hopped on some snowmobiles, went up to the, uh, wilderness boundary line and just spent like four or five hours hiking up into this bowl and just getting untracked lines um, down the down the bowl. And it was incredible. We happened to go on a good day when they had a couple feet of snow too. But uh, yeah, it if anyone wants a winter trip, like I would highly recommend that. Yeah, that's one thing I want to get more into is, is the backcountry. Need to get some skins, get a setup. Yeah, like move to Ben. There's so many toys that you have to buy, and it's like I'm <laughs> yeah, picking them off break. one by one. But <laughs> you will break the bank trying to get all the toys. Yeah, I know. I really want a snowmobile, and I've I've had that on my list for a couple years. So may maybe maybe one of these winners, I'll grab one. All right. Well, then we can go out together. Definitely. Say. Awesome, man. Well, as we wrap up, do you have any just parting advice that you give to someone who's 
considering a, a big pivot, whether that's just in their career or, or business coming from someone who's pivoted a lot and had success with it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I think it's cliche to just be like, follow your passion. Um, but follow your passion, but have a plan, you know, make sure there's, there's a direction. There's a reason for your passion. Um, if you are going to follow it, don't just follow it blindly. Um, and, and don't be afraid to take your time. You know, it's, it's not something where you flip the switch and you change one day and then it's all of a sudden I'm doing this whole different thing and I expect to be successful just already. If you were going to make the switch, know that it could take a while, but it, it's going to be worth it. And if you're following something that you are passionate about, you can still be successful. Just plan it out, you know, have at least some vision for what the future is going to hold and how you're going to get there, how you're going to get to your level of success. And like anything, you know, when I talk to people about building a product, have metrics to follow, what it, you know, define success for yourself. If I, if I make this switch in my career, in my life, whatever I'm doing, what does success look like? How am I going to get there? How long is it going to take? And be realistic, but have that direction and that goal. And then just like building a product, be ready to pivot, you know, stand strong to your beliefs on what your passion is, but also be ready to pivot. Maybe it's not, everything's not all cracked up that you think it is in this one direction that you're heading. But if you turn five degrees to the right, there's a new direction and that's actually going to uh, be a better path for you. So I'd never tell someone just to blindly follow your passion, but I'd never tell someone not to follow your passion. Just do it smartly and you can have a life where you actually get to be passionate about what you do every day. Amazing advice, man. Be intentional. Where can people connect with you? They want to, they want to talk more about this stuff, support you online, plug for the podcast that you're going to be bringing. Yeah. Back. Yeah. I mean, um, if you go to cloud 99.1, so C L O U D 99, the number and dot O N E. So cloud 99.1, um, my website, I have all my stuff about my podcast up there. The consulting I do projects, all the community stuff is, is up there. Well, I'm like, I'm almost done with the website. It's live. I just got to fill in some details, but because I just rebuilt my, my website, but honestly, everything that I talked about today is up there. So, um, and then, yeah, if you want to get in touch with me, all my stuff is on there. Awesome, man. Well, we'll, we'll put all that and more in the show notes for everyone listening and Kyle, Dude, appreciate you, my friend. Keep on doing all the awesome things that you're doing, especially here in Central Oregon, where I get to reap the rewards and, and support you and be a part of it. So thanks, man. Man, I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. This was awesome. And uh, thanks for all your support and, and helping make these events possible. To all of our adventurous listeners, thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Please be sure to subscribe, download, and share this on social media or with someone you know will get some value from it. Leaving a review goes a long way in helping people find the show. And I personally appreciate reading them when they come in. So please go drop one if you have the time. We'll see you all next week. And remember, whether we're talking about business or the things that bring us joy outside of work, life is meant for exploring. So go out there and live it one adventure at a time.